The majority of terrariums, paludariums, fish tanks, and other setups I've showcased on the channel have been for my personal collection in the animal room. I have so much fun doing this, but why keep it to myself? I enjoy collaborating with friends when it makes sense, but there's one that keeps wanting more, Charlie. So far I've helped him build a pond and paludarium, both of which were for turtles. By the way, the man is obsessed with our shell dwelling friends. He runs a conservation foundation, has worked with over 30 species, and has breeding projects to preserve threatened and endangered turtles. However, like anyone in the animal space, his passions don't stop there. He also works with plants, bog gardens, hydroponics, and the focus of this video, fish. Living in a warm climate allows him to keep tropicals outdoors year-round. That's fun and all, but he wanted us to bring that into the turtle garage with a proper display tank. In one of these 40 gallon aquariums to be specific. He gave Nate and I creative freedom to build whatever we wanted. We know that he appreciates animals with interesting behaviors and biotope style setups. We quickly narrowed things down to a Lake Tanganyika inspired tank for a different kind of shell dweller, African cichlids. We didn't have the resources to make an authentic biotope, but we did our best to capture the essence of the Great Rift Lake within the confines of a glass box. Getting a seasoned look from the start was an easy way to pull that off. And what better material for the job than algae? Yes, you heard me right, algae. We intentionally built this with that in mind, but how? Two weeks before arriving, Charlie filled stock tubs with water from the goldfish pond along with fish food where Verde Rock sat under the direct sun to grow algae. This worked exceptionally well, and the stones were ready for our design in no time. We didn't have long to complete this build, so we wasted no time moving the tank onto the rack. I should note that Charlie modified this ahead of time with a wooden structure to get more height. Anyway, this setup will include rocks and a lot of them. Distributing their weight evenly was essential so the glass wouldn't break. My preferred method for that is a crate light diffuser. I cut it down accordingly to get a perfect fit. While I did that, Nate gathered the stone so everything was accessible for the scape. Creating a pile of stones may sound easy, but ensuring it's stable and usable for the fish is another story. It didn't take long before we realized that dry fitting the scape wasn't an option. That meant we had to implement the epoxy from the start, and once something was set, there was no going back. So we mixed it up and pressed it between the contact points. However, this was all very precarious, so we had to build it up in sections. We stacked a few stones, added the epoxy, and waited for it to cure before continuing. As you can imagine, it took hours to get it right. We didn't want it to appear manufactured, and had to account for caves and crevices. We also hid tubing for the filter behind the rock work, so it wouldn't detract from the view. Although the epoxy process was laborious, things came together exceptionally well afterward. As we built upward, we decided to include something neat a sandy beach area that would transition into the rock work itself. We created a hammock of sorts by filling gaps with filter sponge pieces. Then we foamed around the edges to lock it all in. Pouring aragonite sand on this and in the bottom of the tank looked fantastic and brought things together. What we were really excited about though were these reclaimed apple snail shells that have also been soaking in the sun. These will be the primary places of refuge for the fish that will call this place home. We scattered them around to appear random and natural. After that we installed the lid and filled the tank slowly to ensure the water stayed nice and clear. Because this is a cichlid tank, it needs a buffer. This blend of carbonate salts is designed to replicate the natural water chemistry of the rift lakes. Nate is obsessed with Fritz glass cleaner and insists that he's the one that cleans the tanks anytime we work together. This was no exception. Additionally, we added nitrifying bacteria to ensure it would be hospitable for livestock immediately. From the shells to the aragonite sand and the appearance of the algae-covered rock work, I think this design captures the essence of the fish's natural habitat quite well, just on a smaller scale. And as good as it looked without fish, we knew it would look even better with them. Of course we planned for that and Charlie ordered them from his local fish store. We just had to pick them up. After taking a look around, we collected our 10 Neolamprologus simless shell dweller cichlids and headed back to Charlie's. The pH from the store water was much different than that of our tank, 
so we decided to drip acclimate the fish to minimize stress. We poured them into a pitcher and slowly added tank water through drips to gradually dilute the parameters. Over 30 minutes later, they were ready to go. We poured them into a net to remove all of the store water and released them into their new home. The care we took to mimic their natural environment paid off. The fish appeared comfortable immediately. That said, we eagerly awaited for them to enter the shells. They congregated in the right initially, but this one began exploring its surroundings. Once the coast was clear, it inspected the shell and entered. Shortly after, the others followed suit, and before we knew it, were claiming shells of their own. As much as we wanted to keep watching, we were working late into the night, and wouldn't truly get to appreciate this all until the following day. The fish were now utilizing every corner of the tank. They looked at home as they swam in and around the shells, bickering among each other to establish territories. It was so rewarding to see how naturally these fish behaved so early on in the process, and I think it's a testament of a tank done right. Something you still may be wondering though, is why did we add algae to this tank? We had our reasons. It would have happened anyway, and I think it's fair to say that it objectively creates a better aesthetic in a setup like this, and with the proper light schedule, it will remain manageable. Additionally, it will be a good grazing surface for baby fish. The snail shells also have an interesting origin. Unfortunately, in Florida, these type of apple snails are very invasive. Their shell remains are scattered on the borders of nearly every canal, making them perfect for this project. Plus, they're of a similar size to what the fish would use in nature. It was great to see all of this in person, but Charlie sent follow-up footage of them now. They're even more active, which is great to see. As fun as it was to build this setup, we honestly just wanted to spark inspiration. As I said, Charlie loves nature, turtles, fish, and everything like that, but this has given him a new perspective. He's continually told me how much he loves the fish, and that he already wants another fish tank. That's what I love to hear. Of course, I also have to give a huge thanks to Fritz Aquatics for sponsoring the video, making the build possible, and providing products I actually use like the glass cleaner, turbo start, and buffer. One of my main goals with this channel is to inspire. Whether it's through builds for my personal animals or others, I simply love to show what's possible, how I create these works, and if anything, just to get you to appreciate nature a little more.